Hi guys, Miss Freedy here, here, and welcome to today's latest loadout video, where I bring you a new weekly loadout where it could be completely strange, completely tactical, or completely fun to try out every once in a while. So today's loadout, I'm going to be focusing on a character that was well known for his horror deeds back on Dimitar, and it was thanks to his self-sacrifice that he allowed the militia to push out the IMC from the frontier for just a little bit longer and to try and overtake parts of the frontier that has been taken over by the IMC. And his name is James McCallan. Now James McCallan used to be a member of the IMC, but he was a navy officer and he was also quite close to Marcus Graves, who is considered a high commander. And both of these two here had a close relationship where they would participate in war games and simulations to help them with oncoming threats and improve upon their tactical strategy. However, this didn't last for long considering that James McCallan decided to go ahead and leave the IMC because he did not enjoy or like the way the IMC were treating the inhabitants of the frontier planets. So him and the majority of his crew decided to create a mutiny and go off to some backwater colony and set up a small inhabitable town where they would live out most of their lives there. Until the militia came on down and found him and decided to use him for their own advantage. Now when it comes down to me doing a James McCannon loadout, I see him being someone that's completely heroic, someone that likes to be on the front line, someone that likes to encourage his teammates and be the one that likes to do a lot of sacrifices. So you're going to be someone that's going to be on the front line, doing all the hard work to allow you to create a nice pathway. So when it came down to doing the James McCannon loadout, I see him being a heroic figure, someone that all militia or just generally all standard soldiers would look up to and rely on the most. I see him being someone that is always on the front line, someone that's always taken the most riskiest and most hazardous task so that he can create a pathway for the others to move on safely. And I'm going to be implementing that into the loadout. So a word of warning, this loadout will have a lot of sacrifices on your end. Not in a way that you're going to be sacrificing your teammates, but in a way that you're going to be sacrificing yourself. So this could play out in two ways, either the sacrifices you make will allow your teammates to push up and win, or the sacrifices you make will end up making you and your whole team lose completely. It depends on your topic, it depends on your skill level in general. But anyway, let's go into the main loadout. So for James McCallan, I decided to go with the grapple class. The grapple class will basically allow me to move around the map, Quite simply, it allows me to get up to high ele elevations, it allows me to hook onto enemies and pull them in if I need to, and it also allows me to hook onto titans, and this is where it's going to be a key role for playing as James McCallum, as you're going to be rodeoing a lot of players, and you're going to be rodeoing mainly the enemy titan for the majority of the matches. The main primary weapon now is going to be the R101C, it's a versatile and balanced weapon, good for close, medium and long range engagements. And I also decided to go with it because it's also a throwback to Time for 1. So we might as well keep with the standard feel with everything being a Time for 1 type of loadout. The second weapon now is the Mozambique. In this case here, you can either go with the Mozambique or the P2016. Now, if you go with the Mozambique, the Mozambique is great for up close and personal situations. So if you're in a building where you have to take over a hard point, or say if you're on the ground and there's groups of enemies or AI closing on you, closing in on you and you don't have any ammo for your main prime weapon, you can take out your main secondary, the Mozambique, and clean up kills from there. And it's a great little weapon taken on pilots because it can insta-kill pilots quite quickly as long as you aim for the head. Although the weapon is projectile and it is kind of risky at times, it can work amazingly within your favour with killing enemies and letting you move on to your next target. If you don't think you're that accurate using the Mozambique though, then by all means switch to using the P2X16. It's versatile, it's easy, it's small, it's compact, and it's something that any new player that's played any general F FPS game can pick up and just use straight away. Now anti-titan weaponry now is going to be either the MGL or the Archer. Depending on the situation, I recommend that you use the MGL if you're going to be in close range engagements. So for example, in this loadout here, because you're going to be harassing a lot of titans and basically rodeoing them and doing as much damage, I would go with the MGL to do as much damage as possible if I'm in a situation where I can't escape or if I'm on a higher elevation and the enemy titans can't get to me. If on the other hand I have an area where I can escape and the titan is 
chasing me and I have a clear view of them but they don't have a clear view of me I'll use my archer and the archer is good because it does a lot of damage however the only downside to it is it can be easily dodged or easily blocked and it also leaves you quite vulnerable because it, you have to have a nice open line of sight and by doing so you're making yourself vulnerable and titan and other players can see you and generally kill you there and then so it's a 50 50 type weapon that you may want to go with depending on the situation and depending on the map you're playing on your ordinance now is going to be the arc grenade arc grenades will allow me to paralyze titans in the respective space and it also allow me to paralyze other grunts and players as well on the ground for a few seconds quite good if you want to try to make a quick escape and you've got targets chasing you but also quite bad because depending on where you throw it if if you throw it in a in close range environment where you're based in and you get hit by it, you'll also feel the burn as well. And this could also lead to you getting killed. So I advise you to try to use it while you're above the enemy so you're not on the ground at all times. And then go ahead and use your anti-titan weaponry to do some damage or to go ahead and rodeo them if the chance is there. Boost now, I decided to go to map hack. Kind of fits the feel of James McCallum being the supporter as he did support us in many operations back in Titanfall 1. So I thought maybe go with the map pack will allow us to, you know, carry on that legacy, allow us to know where enemies are at all times and basically allow our friendlies to know where to engage and where not to engage and how they can tackle these enemy players on the other team. Your Titan now, I decided to go with Scorch. Now, in this situation here, the Titan that James used back in Titan for 1 was a Ogre Titan, just specifically a Ogre Titan. But his loadout then isn't implemented into Titan for 2 since we now have classes and most of the classes, or should I say most of the Titans, such as the Ogre, Atlas and Striders, all have different abilities and such. So I'm going to give you kind of two options of how you want to go with this. You can either go with an Ogre Titan of your choice, so either Scorch, a Legion, but try to go with a standard brown colour to, to fit the feel of how Militia was back in Time for 1. Or you can go with Scorch, who's probably the closest to the standard Ogre Titan. And then go with Tempered Plating to allow you invulnerability to your own fire attacks. And General Ogre Core, or an extra Dash Core. Depending on which one you want to go ahead. For me personally, I went with Tempered Plating and Ogre Core. So in my situation here, I decided to go with Tempered Plating, as Tempered Plating allows me to take on my own damage, but not to the point of where it's noticeable whatsoever. I'll be invulnerable from my own attacks, allow me to close in on the enemy and do a ton more damage without me worrying about, uh, without me worrying about, oh, I'm going to die to my own attacks. Because that was a major problem back in Titanfall 2, and before the before the many patches that had to be introduced to improve Scorch now. And then I will follow up with Overcore so that I have my main ability up and ready at all times. But you may want to change Overcore to something like extra dash or more electricity because even when you go with will probably allow you a better advantage in closer engagements, especially double smoke. So my pilot kits now is going to be fast regeneration and low profile. Fast regeneration is just for the standard health regeneration to allow me to regen my health much quicker and do damage to them without them noticing for a few seconds. And this is going to come in handy because like I said this whole loadout is going to be about harassing titans. So now in terms of actually playing as Gene McCallum, to start things off just play as normal. Play as you would just generally play when you're playing Titanfall 2 as any type of loadout. Go ahead, find kills, kill enemy AI, kill grunts, kill enemy players, spectres, reapers and all that on the field until the enemy team drops their titans down. Now the moment the enemy team drops the titan down, it'll be up to you to take on that one titan and generally harass them as much as possible. From what I can understand, by you attacking one titan at a time and basically pushing back the enemy team, they won't have a chance to have a snowball effect on you. And I've seen it in many cases where you'll be completely fine playing as such, you drop your titan down, they drop their titan down and the enemy player will be really good or be an effective titan as against your titan and they'll destroy yours and then the enemy and then the enemy team will start to drop their titans down one by one leading to a snowball effect where your friendlies won't be able to 
catch up or do any type of kills. So in this case here, you kind of want to prevent this from happening. So the moment that enemy titan drops down, go ahead, find them, try and be sneaky about it, because the more sneaky you are, the more easier it allow you to grab their batteries and do damage. Go in, find them, make sure you check the surroundings though, as enemy players may be respawning behind them, or there may be grunts or such that might give your position away. When the opportunity is there, jump into that titan, grab the battery, and then in that situation, two options should be in your head. Either fire your MGL or your archer and do damage them if you, if you know you can't escape. Or use your arc grenade to slow them down and then quickly make a dash into cover. Now by you staying in the cover, you're still going to be vulnerable to the enemy titan as they, can, as they can still see you through some buildings and structures. For only, only for a few seconds though. So in this case here, you probably want to be aware of what's going to happen. Either that enemy player is going to jump out the titan and chase you down, or they're going to just back away and not bother. If they do chase you down, then hopefully you should have your map pack ready. Activate it and this should play in handy for you because then you can get the drop on there. And then it's a win-win situation for you because then you can jump on that titan and keep doing more and more damage to them. To the point where they get doomed and, and then the enemy player will have no choice but to either let them get destroyed or take the risk and jump into them. So say if everything did go as planned, say if you did destroy that enemy player's titan and you have their battery now, I suggest you then hold on to that battery and find one of your teammates that has a titan, any titan whatsoever. If it's a monarch that's even a bonus, if it's a ronin that's even more a bonus. Find them and latch onto them, give them that extra battery and then rodeo them and keep rodeoing them to support them even more using your either your anti-titan weaponry or your main primary. Although it's not the easiest to use your main primary weapon on the titan, it does allow them a bit more support and it also especially helps them in a situation where they may be going up against other titans on the field. So say for example you do rodeo your friendly, you give them battery and then you see an enemy titan coming directly at you, you can then take out your MGL or your archer and do some extra damage while they're doing some damage. And this could play really well for you because then it allows you to wipe out the enemy's team titans one by one, allowing your teammates to gather their titans, drop in and then supporting you. So, that, so then instead of them causing a snowball effect on you, you'll be causing a snowball effect on them. But say on the other hand it doesn't all play within your favour. Say, say on the other hand the enemy team all managed to drop their titans in. Or say, for, or say on the other hand the enemy team managed to kill you while you took their battery and they managed to take the battery back as such. You've done damage, that's a good thing. However, this is where it becomes a bit more tougher. This is where you have to personally rely on your skills. And it also depends on the map you're playing on as well. If, if everything starts to get kind of out of hand, drop down in your titan. So, Because at this point here, you should have your titan ready. Drop down in your titan and then use your and then use your ideal loadout. Ideally, if you're using Scorch or Legion, you should be focusing ideally on close range or medium range engagements and support your teammates. That's generally all you can generally do. Do that to the point of where you're doomed. And then if your Titan gets destroyed, but you notice enemy team Titans are down to about half or only about down to two, then you can go back and do what you were doing beforehand. Keep harassing that enemy team's Titans. Because the more you destroy the titans, the longer it takes for them to build up the titan meter again. And then if you have your titans ready, you can all drop your titans in and basically steamroll the whole entire map. So you can all play within your favour, but then at the same time it can play within your favour. And this is generally what I mean about you doing a lot of sacrifices. Because you are going to be on the front line against a titan. A titan that's capable of killing you within a few shots, either firing rockets, firing their main priming weapon, either using a shotgun, a power shot, a full charge rifle, anything. This is why I mean a lot of sacrifices are going to be made just from your end and you could be feeding points to the enemy team if you don't play this out strategically. So just remember, if you see the enemy team and they have a ton of titans, don't risk it as you're feeding them points. Drop your titan down, support your friendlies through rodeos, using MGL, using archer, use your arc grenades as well, that's there as well to help you. Keep doing that, support them as much as possible. And if there is an opportunity to jump on to a Titan, go ahead and use it. I recommend that you either do it manually or use your grapple. Although be aware that if you do use your grapple, it will notify the enemy team. 
or or notify mainly the enemy that you're grappling. So this could put you in two situations where they could either react by putting you into a open area, or they could react by using smoke grenades. And this, like I said, can generally screw you over even more. To play out safe, make sure you make sure you double check your surroundings. Harass whatever titans on the field as much as possible. Do as much damage to them so that they have to take a longer route to recharging their titan again. And if if everything does go as planned, your teammate should be able to push the enemy team back with you being the main head and the main reason for it. So that is the end of the video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did then leave a like, a comment and subscribe for more. If you didn't then by all means leave a dislike, I'll understand and I know what to do in the nearby future. So once again thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all again soon.